I envision um, a dignified future for the women, a dignified future for the boy child, and I believe in the wholesomeness of a family. Because once we divide the men and the boys and the girls and the women, you will find that uh, at one point, the whole world is, we lack balance. But when now you bring up, we have spoken the affirmative uh, for women, and now I'm speaking about the affirmative thing for the boy child. Because they have been left behind. Come to Kenya and you find they are all in drugs, they are all in alcohol, they are all in substance abuse. And these are the ones that are abusing the same women. And they are the same ones who are uprooting your, your, your food sweet crops potatoes. and your sweet <laughs> potatoes. Because they are not, they are angry. They would not want to see a sophisticated, educated woman. They, that woman becomes a threat. And therefore, if we have to address anything, we have to address it from a comprehensive perspective so that uh, we do not have one feeling threatened by the other and then the other one will always destroy the, what the other one is building. And I believe if we want to have that access to credit, uh, to buy land, and then we, we also take a holistic approach to this matter, you will find that we will succeed and there will be no uh, food deficit in any country because people will be working together as one unit. I thank you. It is, it is very possible if we are seriously addressing what Jockey uh, has said, the framework, the uh, policy framework concerning the woman and the land tenor so that we do not think of getting where we are talking about to the husband. Why don't you give me credit for me to buy my own land? So that that one now, we can work even with my husband and children. They can come and we can start having uh, incomes. I, I am a woman in government right now. I come from a ghetto. Uh, I, I'm raised in a ghetto in, uh, in Kenya. And uh, that has not stopped me from rising to the second lady in the republic. And that's why I'm thinking we need to start seeing people, women in a higher level, higher capacity, in an intellectual that is able to do many things, even some of them who have not gone to school. That, that does not mean that they are not educated. Informal learning is another way of getting uh, uh, education. And I think this, this where you, you have to tell someone you need a degree, you need a master's, you know, and this woman has been working on the farm. She knows how to grow uh, the, her, her crops. What she needs is access to credit, access to direct market, and that will change the lives. Right now we are going to the greener mist, we are going to the carbon credit. Why can't we think of financing women to own land? Where now we, we go and uh, there, there is idle land everywhere. If you go to Kenya, we have idle land. But because the woman is not resourced enough to have the money to go and buy that land, and if she goes to any credit, go anywhere, you will find she cannot be able to get it. Then also the, the grants that come, they are tied to, I don't know, capacity building that comes to tell her what she has been doing. For six months, she has to be put on a program where she, she is removed from taking care of her family to going to class every day to be shown how to plant a tree, which she plants every day and takes care of. And I think all these monies that come, it is put on that uh, uh, capacity building, training her on what she knows. I think if this credit could be taken and given to her for food production, for hiring and leasing that land, like now we should be thinking of how they can be able to lease land to plant trees for carbon credit. That I think will be, uh, will be moving the woman from uh, those kitchen gardens to great plantations so that she can also be able to have 
incomes and businesses that she can be able to speak about. If we don't change the, uh, the, the way we are doing the credit for women and we don't address it in the right way, I can see here seated in this, uh, in this table, we have PhD holders, we have women in, uh, with masters and degrees, research and everything. And yet, in all these years, this is the 67 uh, <laughs> year, and we are still speaking the same about uh, these rudimentary uh, women farming and food security issues while we need to lift them to another level. A woman is an instrument of an agro of family. And even though we talk about women and we talk about girls, unless we know that this woman is the is the mother of the boy, the, the girl and the the person who is next to her is a husband. We must have an incorporated approach to everything because the whole food chain will involve this woman and her family. And therefore this woman to be empowered you need like to give him her access to credit and use her intellectual uh, property as a collateral for for it as i was listening and uh, hearing the way we are looking at the future uh, woman in the rural area being given the all the structures and the systems i think uh, we need now to lift the barriers for the women to access credit. Actually, one of the greatest uh, um, hindrances to women in, uh, in uh, food security and all the manner of uh, discriminations that are coming is access to credit. Because even when we address the policy on the large tenure and all the other areas, you will find that uh, the kind of uh, policy framework that has been put, even for all the grants and the, and the, uh, and the, and the loans that are for a woman, they, 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 they are given uh, so much uh, um, hindrances and bottlenecks that the woman cannot be able to access.